After shocking the Proteus in the T20 World Cup last year, the Netherlands has successfully handed them a defeat in the ODI format too. This is their biggest win till date in this format and what a victory it was. But the story we will speak about today is not really what transpired on the field, the run scored or the wickets taken, but the people who orchestrated that, manifested that and worked towards it. The story of the field. We are going to show you how the South African connections helped the Netherlands topple South Africa in Dharamshala. The first one, coach Ryan Cook. His brother Stephen Cook and father Jimmy Cook have played for South Africa. Ryan Cook's very first assignment, in fact, in 2013, was as an assistant coach to the South African under-19 team that travelled to India. That's where it all began. His journey as the Netherlands coach did not begin in the most desirable circumstances. He had to take over from Ryan Campbell in 2022 after he fell severely ill. And Cook's, Cook's first match against England was the rudest possible welcome anyone could receive, with the team almost reaching the 500-run mark against Netherlands. From there to beating South Africa in the T20 World Cup last year, and qualifying for the World Cup here in the one-day format. Beating West Indies in that mammoth run chase has been a massive turnaround in itself. Now the second connection, Gary Kirsten. Ryan Cook reached out to Gary Kirsten, the coach of the Indian cricket team that lifted the 2011 Cricket World Cup. Ryan corresponded with Kirsten on mail requesting inputs, advice and any guidance on the venues and how to play in India. Now, I worked with Gary while at the Indian Premier League franchise's Gujarat Titans and he's one of the finest coaches when it comes to man management, mental conditioning and understanding people. Gary Kirsten, in fact, wrote back in great detail explaining about the different venues, how to tackle them and what it takes to win in India. One thing Ryan Cook says that struck with him, and I quote, Cricket is a team sport and you need the brilliance of 11 to win a game. A couple of good performances should not be enough and we are now joined of course, by former Indian cricket team's coach, Gary Kirsten. Thank you so much, Gary, for taking your time out to do this. My first question to you is, you know South Africa quite well. How do you see them recovering from such a loss? Where do you see them going forward? Yeah, listen, I think it, it certainly um, was not a great result for them. Um, but it's early days in the tournament. They've got two wins under the belt. So, you know, I, I, I suspect that they will come back stronger. Um, I think it was great for the for the for the Dutch team actually. You know they've they they newcomers um, not newcomers, but I suppose they they're not often in positions where they're playing against the best teams in the world. You know all the time, so it's great for them to have an experience. But they've pro they've proven now over two World Cups that they are very competitive, and they're not just a team that's going to sit back and and be walked over. Um, um, so, you know, because I know the coaching staff really well in the team, um, um, you know, I know that they will put a, they put a lot of planning to this game and, um, you know, things have got to fall into place, but I think they've got a great spirit and camaraderie in the team. A lot of those guys have been playing for a number of years with each other now. So, oh, it was great to see. Now, we did hear from Ryan Cook himself saying that he really received a lot of help, a lot of guidance from you right to the lead-up of the World Cup. You've sort of helped them, mentored them. We want to hear from the horse mouth, Gary. Um, I mean, we're chatting to each other every few days, you know. We're good, we good friends and he's, he certainly um, has been a coach that I respect um, hugely as a, as a young coach. I mean, I remember the days not so long ago when he was coaching a school team in, in Cape Town. And... Um, I know that he has uh, he's got this growth mindset so he he's developed and progressed as a coach very quickly um he's got an incredible work ethic and he's got a good understanding of how teams work so it was it was no surprise to me that he was going to do well as a coach um and then yeah our conversations really it's 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 not about um me kind of you know a adding value it's it's more just about us having conversations around how his team can perform at the best, you know, in, in the World Cup. And um, we just, we were shooting the breeze, to be honest with you, just talking about various conditions, different places in India, what are the different types of soil that you're going to be confronted with. Um, and, you know, just very generic stuff that we all talk about anyway. But um, I, I love his attention to detail, put it that way. Right, but before we let you go, we have to ask you, how do you see Netherlands moving forward from here? How do you see their campaign turning out after this particular win? 
I think they're gonna they're gonna be a few more upsets. To be honest with you, they've got a they've got some confidence in their game now, um, and um, I think they've got enough resource and skill in their team to put other teams under pressure. I mean, the two games that they lost, they weren't far away, you know. Um, so they've got the confidence knowing that they can beat big teams. So, and I know that we, they will be really well prepared and I know they'll have, you know, great spirit in their team because they know that they can beat big teams. So I think every team is going to now put a, a lot more effort into their preparation against the Netherlands, um, which is great for the game. I think the brilliant part about Afghanistan and the Netherlands winning games against the big test playing nations is it opens up the World Cup completely, you know. We know now that, uh, you know, it's not easy for everyone to get the seven wins, the, you know, the seven wins that, are, that guarantee you a place, you know, in, in the team. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how India go. They look like a form team at the moment, you know, playing really well at home. And um, they look like a team out of everyone that's the most difficult to beat. So it'll be interesting to see how they progress through the tournament. Well, we'll pick your brains for more on that later. But thank you so much, Gary, for speaking to us. And we continue to tell you the story of the Netherlands team. Now, there are moments that define you in sport. Moments, matches, and sometimes even losses. For the Netherlands squad, having to qualify for the ODI World Cup itself is what truly defines them. The turning point was probably that match against West Indies. Ryan Cook says, and I quote, when we were chasing 374 against West Indies, I told the boys at the break, look, we chased down the Nepal's 167 runs target in 28 overs and if we can just double that in the next last 20 overs we have a chance we tied the game and then of course logan van beek blasted 30 runs in the super over in fact ahead of the odi world cup qualifier in zimbabwe the netherlands team had a mental and cultural camp in cape town everyone was asked to speak about their aspirations what they wanted to see in the team and one of the things pastor lead reportedly said was that Let's go to India and show them we are not pushovers. Which leads me to the third connection. Rulof van der Merwe, born in South Africa, played for South Africa. Some of us may even remember him sporting that green jersey. Now, he has featured in the Indian Premier League. He's among five players in the Netherlands outfit currently who were born in South Africa. He was not in the scheme of things when it came to the World Cup qualifiers, was not even in the squad, was called up for the World Cup here in India. And what a key inclusion he has proved to be. It is tough to have a lot of incentive at 38 when you are on a side that is looked at a team that's just there to make up the numbers. But to play the way he did last night, contributing with both bat and ball for a country that he only made a debut in 2015. Rulof van der Merwe stood up as a senior hand, living up to the words that was delivered by Gary Kirsten. That is what the Netherlands team stands for, to fight against the challenges. Challenges of the physical rigours, as in the case of Rulof van der Merwe. Of the unknown as it was for Ryan Cook of the tag of minnows, as Bastelid says, or that of circumstances. Did you know that Paul Van McKeeren was a food delivery guy in 2020? He ruefully tweeted back then that he should have been playing the T20 World Cup. He says, I should have been playing cricket today. Now I'm delivering Uber Eats to get through the winter months. Funny how things change. Keep smiling, people. And that is exactly what he would be smiling about today. Three years later, after taking two wickets, to dismiss Aidan Markram and Marco Janssen, how life truly comes a full circle. That's the story of sport. You can go anywhere, but you can't quite forget your roots. Sometimes the very roots help you attain the best, like the connection to a country you were born in. And other times it's the roots that are holding you back, which just spurs you to unshackle, break free and beat the odds. The word Netherlands literally translates to lower countries situated below sea level. This Netherlands team surely rose above that and punched above its weight. It's the dream of every cricketer. The ultimate glory. Few manage to keep their date with destiny. But for many, it's been heartbreaks and a cross to bear. The Holy Grail is here in India. I'm Rupa Ramani and First Post brings you the ringside view. We bring you the Cup of Dreams. Cricket World Cup coverage like never before.